Let's see how we can easily save and load the position of this game object. Create a new script and an empty game object to assign it. Inside the script, define a game object variable and in Unity, assign your game object to that variable in the inspector. We are going to define a couple functions, one to save the position and one to load the position. In this case, these functions will be called when we press F5 and F9 respectively. Additionally, the load function will be called on start, so that when the game starts, the object will be moved to the saved position. Let's also define a function to delete the saved data and call it when pressing F3. For now, we will make these functions print messages in the console, so if we run this and press the keys, we should see those messages. Now, the method to save the position I will show you in this video is quite rudimentary. If you have knowledge on object-oriented programming and data structures, I suggest you invest time to research on serialization and JSON parsing. Using those concepts, you can create a more sophisticated saving system. That said, let's continue. In the save function, we need to read the position of the object and store it in memory. On the other hand, in the load function, we do the opposite. We need to read the position from memory and assign it to the object. There is no way to directly save a vector3 data. But a vector3 is not other than three float values. So if we know how to save a float value, we just need to do that three times. And that's what we are going to do. Let's define three float variables, x, y, and z, and initialize these variables with x, y, and z components of the position of our object. Then, using the setFloat function from playerprefs, save each variable under a meaningful name. For example, position x, position y, and position z. We could also save an integer value to know that there is saved data. In the load function, we are going to check if the key of the previous integer value exists, and if it does, it's because previously the saving function was called, so there is data to load. Then, using the getFloat function from playerprefs, we are going to read the saved float values under the names we give them in the saving function, and use those values to create a vector3, which then we assign to the position of our game object. And to finish, in the delete function, we delete the saved position key. So, next time we load the data, the key won't exist and the game object remains in the initial position. Time for testing. Let's move the object and press F5, the data was saved. Move the object and press F9, the object returns to the saved position. And if we restart the application, the position of the object is loaded. If you press F3, the data will be deleted. And next time you enter the scene, the object will start in the initial position. Here in Edit, you can delete all the player prefs stored data. Subscribe to this channel so we can see each other again in the next video.